From Eyewitness News, this is the Tarbox Toyota Hyundai Friday Night Football Wrap. Welcome to week 11 of the high school football season. In Division 2, the postseason is underway, but we begin with the showdown for supremacy in Division 1. LaSalle still undefeated in league play. In fact, the win over rival Bishop Hendrickson, and the Rams take the D1 title. LaSalle leading 7 0 in the second and looking for more. Anthony Francis takes a snap, fires it to an open tie. Neil Cooper in the end zone. Rams have 21 zip at the half. In the fourth, after a hot turnover, Francis puts the game away to Mitch De Silva. Rams dominate and clinch the top spot in Division 1, 28 to 7, the final. That's a, that's a good football team we played tonight, and uh, you know we played pretty well. And you know we're just hoping that we could continue our success that we have and, and kind of ride this wave. We knew coming to this game, especially after last year, you know we need to play, just give it our all. And uh, I'm really proud of these guys. I think we played pretty good tonight. Cranston East trying to lock up a spot in the postseason, hosting South Kingstown at Cranston Stadium. In the first, Rebels QB Ryan Worthington. The handoff to Raphael Pierce. He storms past the defenders, tumbling his way in for the score. But the Bolts able to answer in the ensuing kick. EJ Eason receives the kickoff. He darts down the sidelines, faking defenders, giving some great blocks along the way. Eventually, he's going to take this thing to the house. We have a show to finish. We can't wait forever. Cranston East hangs on for the 23-17 victory. Seating still at stake for Portsmouth. They enter the night with a 5-2 league record playing at Barrington. First quarter already leading 8-0. Pats on the move again. Bobby Chavis flush. Dumps it off to this check down man of the backfield, Matt Greenman. He does the rest. Two-point conversion gives the Pats a 16-0 lead. Next, Portsmouth drive stopped by the Josh Adams sack, but Portsmouth improves to 6-2 in D1, 44-14. The final, two teams looking to finish strong. Cranston West making the trip to take on East Providence. These fans loving their quarterback. Game was scoreless late in the half. West fourth uh, down at the three, fourth and goal it was, but Ben Vega the denial for the Westie. Tougher tonight. Dominic DeSandro, the fumble recovery. Falcons earn a hard fought victory 19 13 over EP. We also have a crossover matchup. Division 1 Tolman taking on the top team in Division 3, still undefeated Middletown. First half winding down. Tolman's Brandon Dunlap picked off here by Justin Bailey in the end zone. Nice job getting the feet down. Middletown able to take advantage. Justin Seller, the play fake. Over the middle to Randolph Butler. Islanders take the lead, but Tolman would rally back, handing Middletown its first loss of the season, 12-8. Your final coming up next on the football wrap, a surprise score in Division II quarterfinal action after the break. Hi, we're the Narragans and Shooters. Stick around for more car As mentioned, the playoffs are underway in Division 2. For more, let's throw it over to Sarah Hogan. Sarah. Eric, from top to bottom, the race in Division 2 has been intriguing from the first week of the season until the brackets were filled out last week. Only two teams made is through league play uh, undefeated, both in action tonight. The top seed in Division 1A, Johnston hosting Central. And one of the quarterfinals, Panthers hoping to dance all over the night tonight. And they were up 7-0 when the Central offense gets in gear. Donald Johnson goes up top and finds Jonathan Amato, that big pass and catch sets up this Johnson dives in behind the line to tie the score at 14. The home team would respond. However, Mark Breton hands off to Mark Conti. Mark turns the corner and finds the end zone, but Central gets the upset in OT. The big upset of the night in playoffs. They eliminate the Panthers from playoff contention. 21-20 your final score on the other side of the bracket. Cumberland undefeated and seeded first in Division 2B, taking on a tough westerly squad. Pick up the action, second half, Clippers out to a 34-0 lead. Looking to add on Brendan Guerin under pressure. Threads the needle through to Trent VC in the end zone for the score. Two TD passes on the day for Guerin, but the Bulldogs avoiding the shutout would score on their next drive as Philip Lynch goes over the middle to a wide open Clayton Minich for the 40-yard TD. But that was the lone Bulldog score of the game as the Clippers advance the D2 semifinals 
where they will play the winner of tomorrow's Mount Hope West Fork game. The Division II playoffs underway, but we still have some teams playing for pride. Rogers Warwick Vets meeting in Warwick first quarter. Uh, no score until Karam Bostic targets Blake Anderson down the seam, and he has gone 50 yards. 8-0 Rogers. Canes, however, would strike back once we catch up with the play. Jesse Sedoma would be looking deep, and then, well, you know what? He connects with Carter Thomas in the end zone. Vets cuts into the lead, but the Vikings would prove to be strong in the end. 45-12, your final. And in Division Three, playoffs don't start for a couple of weeks. The race is still on for the number four spot, a lot riding on a big matchup in there against it. And the Mariners enter the night at 3-3 three three in Division Play on Military Appreciation Night. We all appreciate our guys out there fighting for the playoff lives against the 3-4 and four Classical. First quarter action, Classical going for it on fourth down. Griffin Clark looking for Tim Shea, but it's broken up by the Mariners, and they take over on the ensuing drive. Cullen McGill rolls right and connects with Reed Nelson, who takes it all the way down to the 15, which sets up the pitch. Deontay Stanley, who bounces it out to the left, cuts through the defense, and he is in for the score, 21-6. Your final score. East Greenwich trying to lock up the number two seed in D3. The Avengers taking on Barville. Last drive of the game and the Avengers marching down the field headed up by this big run by Ryan Faison who would then again get the handoff for this short run and then he would take it in for six more. The Avengers go on to win 48 nothing. the shutout. Further down the standings, Lincoln still searching for its first win of the season. The Lions hosting Tiverton on senior night. Tiverton down six in the third. Andrew Murray feeds it to Matt Delio, who drags defenders, but is brought down at the one from there. Murray keeps it, and, well, he finds the end zone. Tiverton wins 12 to six. In a mass Rhode Island crossover up in Smithfield, the Sentinels hosting Blackstone Millville. This little fan getting an early start in his football career. Great catch. Put him in there, coach. Pick up the act in second quarter. Sentinels up 21-6, looking to add on. <coughs> Excuse me. The pitch to David Perillo pays off as he runs it in 25 yards for the TD. But Smithfield capping off one more drive. Before the half, it's Brendan Benoit runs it in for the QB sneak. Sentinels knock off Blackstone Millville 49-14, your final. And remember to go to WPRI.com to see all of our highlights plus the scores. Let's send it over to Eric in the Coach's Corner. Thank you, Sarah. Joining us this week is Mount Hope head coach Brian Cody. And coach, we appreciate you taking the time. I know you don't play until tomorrow, but thank you for coming in and talking to us on the eve of your playoff game. My pleasure. Yeah, no problem. And uh, as I mentioned, you do play tomorrow against uh, West Warwick in your uh, playoff game in Division Two. Just talk a little bit about going into that. You, you didn't play them in the regular season, but uh, what are you looking to see from the uh, Wizards tomorrow? Well, they're a very athletic team. I think uh, they have really good speed, uh, team speed. So I think, uh, you know, we have to be able to um, cover the guys down the field. They throw the ball down the field a lot. Uh, you guys have had kind of an interesting path to get to this point. Uh, we talked about this as well. You guys came on strong, and then last week you needed the win to get into the playoffs, and your guys go out and you do it. So you have the old cliche of the playoffs have actually already started for you guys, right, a week well, early? Exactly. I mean, last, last week was a playoff game for us, and mm -hmm. uh, we knew going in that uh, Warwick Vets was a tough team. So we had to get a fast start in that game, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, this is your first year uh, coaching at Mount Hope. Just talk a little bit about, did you expect this to, to kind of happen? Is this the year that you expected? Or were you, were you not knowing anything kind of going in and just kind of taking it week by week? Well, I knew a little bit about the team. I knew we had talent. And, of course, it took some time to get the, uh, the team to understand our schemes and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So we got off to a slow start. But uh, I think we picked it up uh, once the kids really understood what we were trying to do. I think uh, really for us, uh, the Winsaka game in, in week four, we really turned things around. Um, I think, you know, that was a good team that we played on the road. And the second half of that game, we, sh we shut them out and we got 26 points and nothing in the second half of that game after losing 7-0 uh, at halftime. So that really was the turning point of our season. And, and at that point, I think the kids really believed in our systems. We also like to take the time to get to know the coaches a little bit when we have them on here. So let's uh, get to know you a little bit. Sure. Uh, first year at Mount Hope, but you do have coaching experience, plenty of it in the state of Rhode Island, right? Where were you at before you came to Mount Hope? Well, I was a uh, offensive coordinator under Coach Chris Branch at Smithfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I enjoyed it there. It was a great program, uh, and uh, we had a lot of fun there. And in fact, last year we, we had a division championship there for the first time in 30 years. So uh, that was a lot of fun. We had a great group of kids there. And uh, as far as your history in football in Rhode Island goes back pretty far, right? Uh, yeah. You actually played a little college ball here too, didn't you? I did. I played at the University of Rhode Island under Bob Griffin under the, in the uh, early 80s, and uh, we had good teams there at that time. 
Yeah, talk a little bit about that. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that follow the URI football program, but the old Yankee Conference, you were telling me, right? It's good times back then playing? Yeah, we did. And, and when I was a sophomore, we won a Yankee Conference title. And, uh, yeah, we had some really good teams. And, uh, of course, after I graduated, then Tommy Earhart was there. And yeah. they went on to the national semifinals. And we had some great teams. Best of luck to you tomorrow. And uh, maybe we'll talk to you here in a couple of weeks as well, too. Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Once okay. again, uh, Brian Cody of uh, Mount Hope uh, head football coach. We're back with more we'll wrap after this Massachusetts games and some URI basketball. We'll wrap things up after the break. After taking out Wareham last week, Titan Rehoboth entered the night alone in first place in the South Coast Conference and looked to take another step toward a league crown. The Falcons looking to improve to 8 1 overall, hosting a Ponequit on senior night for the Falcon crew. Defense brought its A game early. Lakers driving, drive stop. Jake Junker causes the fumble. Alex Goss recovers it. A little later, more D. Fourth down. Jake Teixeira stops Matt Michael short. After the turnover on downs, Falcons turn it into offense. Kyle Rose takes the handoff from Nate Kowalski, and he is off 73 yards later. It's a touchdown. Falcons stay undefeated in the SEC and clinch a playoff berth 28-12. The final. Attleboro looking to snap a three-game losing streak. The Blue Bombardiers hosting Taunton. Tigers wasting little time getting on the board. First drive. Kyle Madera handoff to Domingo Jenkins. Domingo, 49-yard. Touchdown run, no extra points, so it's 6 0. Later, after a turnover, Bombardiers go ahead. Tim Walsh connects with Tom Burns. Extra point makes it 7 6, but the Tigers able to outlast the Bombardiers 40 34. The final. After months of barnstorming New England and reshaping the roster, the Dan Hurley era begins at URI. Hurley and the Rams tipping off against an NCAA tournament team from a year ago. Norfolk State upset the two-seed Mizzou in the first round last March. In this part of the Hall of Fame tip-off classic, the Rams ready to go midway through the first, down by one. Nick Milesevich for three. URI up five at the break. Norfolk State battles back to take the lead in the second. Milesevich again, a career-high 26 points for Nick, but the Spartans eventually pull away. 67-55 the final. The Rams play at Virginia Tech Monday. Bryant starting out on the road. Might as well get the hardest game of the season out of the way right off the bat. Number one, Indiana. The Bulldogs fell behind 7-0 to start the game. Diamy Starks gets him on the board with the three later. Corey Maynard from the corner. Bryant crawls back within one, but too much. Cody Zeller, the big man, leading the Hoosiers. 18 points, 10 rebounds. They win big. Bulldogs play at PC Monday. That'll do it for the wrap. Have a great weekend, everybody.